Now, let's get wild and crazy. Let's do some cyclic compounds. Now, with ketones, this is incredibly easy because the ketone is going to take the number one carbon position. So, it's like cyclohexene. We don't need to specify the position of the E and E because it's going to be the number one carbon. Same thing's going to be true with the cyclo here. This is cyclohexanone. So we got the cyclo for ring, hexa because there's six, A because it's an alkane, and the O and E to specify that it is in fact a ketone. Everything else is going to follow your normal naming procedure. So we need to write out the groups in alphabetic order. So we got an ethyl and a hydroxy. And we want to name this in such a way to minimize the number of the first difference. So since the other comes first, this is 3-ethyl, 6-hydroxy, cyclohexanone. So if you have a ketone in the ring, it is automatically the first carbon. You're going to name the cyclo part as normal, but instead of having the A and E ending, it's going to be A-N-O-N-E, hexanone, hexanone, to let you know that there's a ketone in there. When you go to name, write out the groups on the ring, and then you want to minimize the, the difference of the first position in the naming. And that's how you name cycloketones.